What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new add-on from Curic for isolating objects inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I saw this extension come out last week, but I hadn't had a chance to take a look at it until today. And basically what this is, is this is an extension called Curic Birdcage, and it's designed to help you isolate objects in your model. So it gives you a few different ways of doing that. So what you do is you select things in your model and then you can quickly isolate them just by clicking a button. There's some information a little further down about how you can isolate these objects. So you've got the ability to isolate by objects, tags, and materials. And you can use this in order to quickly get in and manage those complex models. Um, so I will link to this in the notes down below if you do wanna check it out, but let's take a look at how this works. Okay, and so basically the way that this works is you click on the little button for the isolate manager, and that's gonna pop up a window that looks like this. This is actually interesting because this window is going to give you a preview of what an isolated object might look like. And so let's say we've got a house like this cabin model from Mike Bristol that I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. So it's got a bunch of stuff in here, right? It's got a, um, it's got terrain, it's got trees, it's got a house, and I may just wanna get in here and just access the house. And in the case of a model like this one, because he hasn't placed things like the plants really on tags, he's just, I mean, he's kinda got them on tags, I guess, but um, not, not in any way that allows me to isolate things the way that I want. Well, what this tool does is this gives me three ways to isolate things. So the first is going to be by objects. So what I can do is I can select an object like this and then click on the isolate function. So that's gonna do two things. So first off, it's going to isolate the object that I had selected directly inside of SketchUp by turning everything that wasn't selected off. And so you can see that all the things like the trees and basically everything that wasn't selected is toggled off. But the cool thing about this is this also generates a thumbnail so that you can see what this is going to look like if you were to switch back. So if I was to click back on this button right here, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna swap this. So now I can see, okay, if we were to isolate right now, this is what this scene would look like. So it gives you a fast, easy way to kind of toggle back and forth like this. Now, say that you wanted to isolate just different parts and pieces of this. So say that I wanted to isolate maybe this railing and then maybe the windows and doors associated with it, which uh, those are all kind of in here as individual parts and pieces. So that may take a little longer to select than I wanted. But say that I just wanted to isolate these objects. Well, what I can do is I can click on the button to click on add to isolation like this. Well, now notice how those objects are going to be isolated in here. And I can swap this just like this in order to quickly see just those things. And so say I wanted to add these chairs to that isolation, I can select them. Notice how there's a little plus button right here. That's going to add those two objects to that isolation. So now notice that this tells me that this is gonna isolate 12 elements instead of 10 elements. So it's really easy to add objects to that isolation. So for example, I could take these objects and add them to the isolation as well like this. And now notice how those are visible as well. And then once you're done with all of this, like if you want this all to just kind of go away, you can just click on the button right here to end the isolation. We're gonna click on yes. And this is going to put this back to the way that it was before. So quick, easy way to isolate based on groups. All right, so one thing I did wanna let you know about um, is this is something that I'm coming back retroactively and talking about. Um, so when you use this tool, I saved it with this isolation function in here. And so what that means is that means that isolation function is kind of like not necessarily locked in here. I mean, I could come in here and I could delete the scene that it creates, but notice what it did is within my base model view, it kind of saved it with all of these groups turned off. Cause that's basically what this tool is doing, right? It's going through and it's turning off. Um, it's automating the process of turning off all of the things in your scene. So all you have to do is just come in here and do a shift click and toggle everything back on in order to see it 
in your scene. And so if you run into that issue um, and you get some kind of weird things going on with the isolation, there's an easy way to fix it, which is just delete out the tabs that it creates. So just delete the scenes right here and then just kind of restart. So now if I click back in here and I do an isolate, it's gonna ask me to create a new scene. Now things are kind of back to normal. So if you do run into that issue, just delete out the tabs at the top of the page and then toggle everything back on and just kind of start over from a birdcage isolate standpoint. It's not broken. You're just kind of resetting the whole process. Okay. And so let's say that we had all of our plants or a bunch of our plants tagged. Um, so I'm just going to add a tag really quick and I'm just going to call this plants for video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag everything I have selected with the plans for video tag that I just created like this. And so what that does is that makes it really easy for you to toggle these off, but it doesn't make it really easy for you to isolate them. Right? So say I wanted to work just on the plants and nothing else. Well, that gets a little bit tricky specifically because then you have to come in here and you have to toggle all of the other tags off and hopefully everything has been tagged properly. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. And it can just be a little bit problematic. And so what you can do with this tool though, is you can actually select an object with the tag that you want, click on this button right here, and you can isolate just those objects based on that tag right here. So now notice how this has isolated everything that doesn't have that tag in your scene. So now you can get in here and you can make changes and adjustments to your plants just like this. And then when you want everything back, you can just click on the button right here in order to do that. So that's actually a really fast way to isolate um, a specific tag or group of tags. Let's say for example, these were on a furniture for video tag right here. But notice how I can mouse over the, or I can select these objects and with furniture for video being the active tag, I can click on the button right here to add that tag to the isolation as well. So you can actually use this to isolate multiple different tags at the same time. Now, one thing I'd like to see in a future version is maybe a list of the tags that I have selected right here so that I can actually see what they are. So because right now it just tells me that I have two tags in here, but it doesn't really list out what they are. As far as I know, there's no real ability to do that. Um, but you can quickly use this in order to isolate tags in SketchUp. And then once I'm done, I can just end that isolation again and everything's kind of back to normal. And then finally, we've got an option in here to isolate by material. Now this one, at least to me, is a little bit limited. And so the reason I say that it's limited is because it only really works by checking the materials associated with groups themselves. So for example, notice how these boxes, if we look at them, they don't have the materials applied to the faces, they have the materials applied to the outside of the group. Well, when that's the case, what this tool can do is it can come in here and it can isolate based on a selected material. So notice how it's going to isolate based on that blue, or if I was to select another material, or if I was to select another material right here, I could isolate by the green. So I could really isolate by any of those materials or even by multiple different selections. So if I had multiple materials selected, notice how it's going to isolate based on those materials. However, the problem with this is it's only reading the materials on the outside of groups. So say for example, that I was to take this object right here. And instead of applying the material to the outside of the group, I was to do a control A and take that same blue material and apply it to the surface like this. Notice how that group doesn't have a blue material associated with it. Well, what that means is that means that now when I run this isolation, notice how that box isn't going to show up in here. So even though it's blue, this isn't reading the materials on faces. It's just reading the materials on the outside of groups. That for me is a little bit of a limiting factor um, just because uh, usually that's not how I apply materials. I try to apply materials to the faces. Um, you kind of have to in a lot of situations um, because you have grouped geometry, but then you have the individual faces need to have different materials. So for me, the material isolation function right now, because it's basically using only groups is a little bit limited and there's limited numbers of situations where I would actually use it. But overall, um, the ability to isolate objects based solely on a 
selection or even a tag is actually massively valuable because it just gives you a really quick way to hide everything else in your model without having to mess around with hiding and unhiding groups or using different tags. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. I'll link to this in the notes down below, but I'd love to hear from you. Could you see yourself using this tool? Um, and what do you think you'd use it for? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.